Here are five tips that got me a $400,000 offer at Google. Full disclosure, this is not one of those videos at all. I'm a self-taught programmer and I'm about two and a half years into my journey, but I still consider myself to be an amateur. My style is raw, unpolished, uncut, whatever you want to call it. I just tell it like it is. I've been through dozens of coding interviews and this video is honestly just a synthesis of what I've seen and what has more or less worked for me. So you can take it, you can leave it. All right, so let's jump in. But before we do so, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Dylan. In 2020, when the pandemic hit, I began teaching myself how to code. About a year and a half into my journey, things finally started to come together for me to where I was getting interviews and job offers with some really cool companies, one of which is the startup that I work for today as a full-time programmer. It's been over two years since my journey has began and my life has definitely changed. On my channel, I share the countless lessons that I've learned along the way. And honestly, I'm still learning. I've just made a commitment to learn in front of other people. Here are the coding interview tips for amateurs that I recommend. Do not BS the interviewer. The worst thing that you can do here is get caught in a lie. That is the absolute worst thing. Like fluffing your skill set on your resume is one thing, but actually getting into the interview and not knowing what you're talking about is a whole completely different story. You don't want to be in that situation and you don't want to be that person. So the best thing to do always in interviews is just to be transparent. If you get an interview question that you don't really know how to confidently answer, it's okay to say, you know, I, I'm not sure if I can 100% answer this question correctly, but I'm going to take a shot at it. You don't want to go ahead and make it look like you know the answer when in reality, you don't know the answer. Honestly, I've been in interviews before when an interviewer will ask me a question question that I don't really know the answer to. And I've been like, I don't want to bullshit you. I know that this seems kind of like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But the thing is, is that interviewers, they run into a lot of interviewees that do BS them. If you weren't to be transparent, think about it. In their eyes, how would this reflect on you as a potential coworker of theirs? If you're given a task to do something and you don't know how to do it, but you act like you know how to do it, that might not really be the best formula for success. They want somebody who is going to be transparent. If you're tasked with something to do and you don't totally know how to do it, honestly, a lot of times it's better to just say, I'm not 100% sure how to do this, but I'm gonna go figure it out. People like that attitude, interviewers like that attitude. So do not BS the interviewer. Approach interviewers as if you are coworkers already. Some people might argue against this point because it's like, oh, you should be formal in an interview. Honestly, what's worked for me is to just go into the interview under the assumption that you guys are already working together. There's this whole thing about like, what is it that you should emphasize in a coding interview? Should you have strong technical skills or should you just focus on behaviorally like doing a good job and making sure that you have good chemistry with the interviewer from my experience for entry-level roles i would go with the latter companies want to make sure that they have chemistry with the person that they're hiring so that down the line you know they can teach and mentor you to be that next great engineer or developer so you can approach interviewers as if you already kind of know them the one caveat to this is that i wouldn't get too comfortable with your approach and honestly you can be the best judge of what is too comfortable. Like I wouldn't go around sharing really personal details of like what you did this past weekend and whatnot. Like just be cool, calm, confident, and act as if you already kind of know this person. You want to make them feel comfortable. It shows that you feel comfortable. This is great. The real upside to this approach for you is that by you displaying that you're comfortable with the person, you get to see how they react to that. If they react stiff, you know that it's probably not a great fit for you. This is a two-sided street, right? You have to do some vetting on your end to see if the company is a good fit for you. If the interviewer reacts comfortably to your own comfortableness, then I think that that's a great sign. All right, let's talk about energy and energy levels. For me, I would say that my general energy level out of 10 is like a five. If I'm talking to you, I'm just like, hey, you know, what's up? How's it going? What'd you get for lunch today? Oh, that's awesome. Like I'm kind of sitting at this voice, this like resting voice and energy level. The rule that I've went by for interviews is that if I'm sitting at a five, energy level, I want to boost it up to like a seven and a half. Hey, what's up? What did you get for lunch today? Oh, that's awesome. That sounds fantastic. Just a little bit more charisma, a little bit more twang. You don't want to go over the top though. That would be kind of weird. Like if you're at like a 10 energy level where you're freaking out and it seems like you just got electrocuted by something, obviously that's not good. That's not going to look 
Again, you're trying to make a good first impression. You wanna show charisma because you're interested in the company, interested in the role. So do that by adding a little bit more flair. Go from a five to a seven and a half. Again, this is what's worked for me. Maybe you would be better at a six or an eight. Try it out. So to sum it up, number one, don't BS the interviewer. Always be transparent about your skill set. If you're tasked with a difficult coding challenge or a difficult question, it's okay to take a stab at it, but I would just try to be confident and transparent with your response. Secondly, approach interviewers as if you're coworkers with them already, but make sure that you don't get too comfortable or else that would be weird. And lastly, maintain a charismatic energy level. I recommend that if you are normally at a five out of 10 energy level, when you get in an interview, bump it up to a seven and a half. It's great to show a little bit more charisma when you're interviewing. All right, so these were the coding tips for amateurs that I have. Again, this is not a one size fits all approach. This is simply what's worked for me in the past, and I'm hoping that it works for you. You can feel free to kind of change these and alter them based on your own experience and what works for you. If you found this video helpful, feel free to give this video a like. Let's push it out to more people so we can help more people. I'm always making content related to this. So if you feel like you resonated, hit that subscribe button, and I'm always so down to engage with the community. So feel free to drop a comment below. Until next time, peace.